Sam Altman tweeted that writing a really great prompt for a chatbot persona is an amazingly high leverage skill and an early example of programming in a little bit of natural language. This video is about proving that that's correct with these game changing prompts. I was genuinely mind blown by a lot of these prompts. So let me know in the comments, which one's your favorite. Let's start with asking Bing to be your personal free interview coach for the exact position that you're applying for. I picked a job almost at random and then pressed the Bing button in the Edge browser. It opened up Bing chat. I then gave it this prompt. You will ask me interview questions for the position detailed on this page. Notice I did not specify the job. I just said detailed on this page, Bing understood the job. I want you to only reply as the interviewer. Do not write all the conversation at once. Ask me the questions and wait for my answers. Do not write explanations and ask me the questions one by one waiting for my answers. This prompt was inspired by a GitHub post link in the description. And look what Bing does. It reads the page. It understands the job description. And then it starts asking me relevant questions. It even gets into character. Please answer my questions as best as you can. Question one, why do you want to work for us? And if you just thought these were gonna be generic questions, no. It says, thank you for your answer. What are some of the benefits and challenges of implementing robotics and AI solutions in finance and or supply chain processes? This is part of what I would do in this job. People pay hundreds and thousands of dollars for interview coaches, but you could practice with Bing for free. You could even ask it to grade your answer. Furthermore, you could paste your CV and say, my skills are listed below. Write out all the reasons I would be appropriate for the position listed on this page. And Bing understands what you mean and gives you the reasons why you might be a good fit. I think Bing might just be the ultimate job finding assistant. The next game changing prompt involves asking Bing to improve its suggestions. Imagine you wanted to create a YouTube channel and you ask it, find 10 original names for a YouTube channel on the intersection of AI and politics. And I know what you're thinking, this is an easy prompt. Anyone could have come up with this. How is this game changing? But look at how bland the answers are. AI and democracy, AI politics, the future of politics with AI, they're okay, but so bland. But you can ask Bing to research how best to name things and to improve its suggestions based on that research. Check this out. This particular prompt was inspired by Ethan Mollick and I wrote, now use the Igor naming guide to come up with better names and tell me why they're better. This guide advises you to create evocative names that convey a rich meaning and emotion without being literal or generic. It suggests inventive, descriptive, evocative names. And based on this suggestion, look at the new names. I think they're brilliant. Spark, Ethos, Paradox, Influent, Polaris. I think Polaris is particularly impressive. It says a name that suggests guidance, direction, and leadership in the complex world of AI. So not all prompts are born equal. You can get Bing to improve upon itself. But we are just getting started with game-changing Bing prompts. Not all of the prompts have to be strictly functional. I was absolutely blown away by this prompt. I think any adult would enjoy using the following prompts and clearly children would too. You can ask, I want you to act as my time travel guide. I will provide you with the historical period or future time I want to visit. And you will suggest the best events, sites or people to experience as if we were living in those times. Simply provide interesting suggestions and stay in character. My first request is, I want to visit the Viking period in Britain. And it gets into character. It transports us in time. Greetings, traveler. You have chosen a fascinating and perilous time to visit. Some of the best events, sites, or people to experience are witnessing the first Viking raid on Lindisfarne in 793. I want to go there, by the way. Join a Viking longship expedition across the North Sea or even meet King Alfred the Great of Wessex, one of the most influential rulers in British history. I, of course, stayed in character and said, I would love to meet King Alfred, but where shall I rest my head at night in these perilous parts? Right now, in my head, I'm in Viking Britain. Bing replies, a wise choice, traveller. King Alfred is a remarkable man who has faced many challenges and triumphs. He is a patron of learning and culture. To meet him, you will have to travel to Wessex, the southernmost Anglo-Saxon kingdom. And then it suggests towns and villages where I can rest my head at night. These are all real and I may indeed visit them in real life. It even suggests ways I could continue. I want to stay in a monastery, I want to stay in a castle, etc. This is role playing on another level. 
As I say, incredible for children and addictive for adults too. What about investments and making money? Thing is, Bing won't give you direct financial advice, but if you phrase the question like this, you can learn lots of interesting trends. I asked, if I had invested $100 in each of stocks, bonds, real estate, and cash savings accounts in the US in 2000, what would they each be worth now? Imagine you're deliberating how to assign your portfolio. This could be genuinely interesting. Bing is now able to do four, up from three, simultaneous searches and compare the performance of each of these categories in any given time period. By the way, out of interest, stocks returned 6.5%, so that $100 would now be worth 366. For bonds, it would be 233. For property, it would be 236. And for cash, it would be 122. Now, of course, you would want to follow the links and do more research yourself, and Bing is never gonna directly tell you how to invest your money. But for gaining basic financial education, Bing can be crucial. I would envisage over the next three to five years, financial advisors being mainly replaced with AI tech. But of course, let me know what you think. I think this next prompt is also mind blowing. When Bing makes mistakes, you can actually give it an example of a correct answer and Bing will improve its own logic. Bing chat isn't this static model that will always give the same output. You can teach it and this is called few shot prompting. Here's a question that Bing and ChatGPT notoriously get wrong. The question is, when I was six, my sister was half my age. Now that I'm 60, how old is my sister? Now clearly, if the sister was half your age, she would have been three at the time. That's an age gap of three. And now that you're 60, she would be 57. But Bing gets this wrong, as you can see below. And now you're thinking, how is this a game-changing prompt if Bing gets it wrong? What's game-changing is the next prompt, because all you have to do is give it one correct example, preferably starting with the phrase, let's think step by step. An entire academic paper has been written about how that phrase improves outputs. But follow it on with an example of a correct usage of logic. I gave an example of me being 10 and my sister being half my age. I ended with, does this make sense? Being understood and learnt. I gave it no further pointers and just asked, so when I was six, my sister was half my age as before. Now that I'm 60, how old is my sister? Notice I never said 57. I never gave it the right answer. So surely it would get it wrong again. No, it updates its logic, thinks it through and gets the answer right this time. This is called few shot prompting, and you can radically improve the performance of your prompts in this way. I think that's incredible. The next prompt is gonna show you how to get around Bing's reluctance and turn learning into an amazing adventure. One thing that Bing is generally quite reluctant to do is to play act. Now I know I did show you it play acting earlier, but in general, it doesn't like doing it. And notice when I asked it to act as an entertaining etymologist, someone studying the history of words, it denied that request. It says, that's not my purpose. However, notice what happens when I clear the conversation and take away the request to act as a role. This time I took away the role play element and gave the request directly. Bing thought this was an interesting challenge. It was the exact same challenge it denied earlier and went along with it. And look at how fun this adventure can be. I said, I'm gonna give two words. I want you to trace the origins of the words and keep going back in time until you find a language that they were both spoken in. I then gave an example. This was a one shot prompt and then said, start with the words management and pizza. And it understood the game. It didn't just give me the origin of the words. It then said, so both words have roots in Latin. That would be a language they were both spoken in, in their earlier forms. After this, the game was set. All I needed to do was give it two more words. I didn't need to explain the game again. I said sky and thing. I actually know a bit about the etymology, the word origin of these two words. And did you know that they both have roots in Proto-Germanic and Old Norse, Viking language? You can read the fascinating word histories on the left. You can imagine using prompts like this to teach yourself or to teach others in an educational setting. It's so much more entertaining this way. The next prompt concerns prompt formatting and research. You can specify the exact format of Bing's outputs. This could be transformative for academic research or even personal research. I said, give me one, the date of publication, two, a summary of the abstract and conclusion, three, the main author, 
and four, citations on five peer-reviewed, spelled wrong by the way, papers concerning caffeine consumption and cognitive performance. It understood exactly what I wanted and gave me this in this format. These are genuine links as you can see, and of course the onus is on me to fact check them. But what's brilliant is the formatting. It's given me the date, given me the summary of the abstract, the main author, the citations. And honestly, the hallucinations are reducing gradually. Instead of relying on random articles you find on Google, you can do an instant meta-analysis of your own, comparing peer-reviewed studies by a range of authors. The next prompt can provide endless entertainment. One problem, you do have to use ChatGPT, not Bing, because Bing denies the request. The prompt is amazing though. I want you to act as a drunk person. You will only answer like a very drunk person texting and nothing else. You'll make a lot of grammar and spelling mistakes in your answers. My first sentence is, how are you? And look at the super random conversation I have. This is so fun, I might just continue this conversation now. ChatGPT is talking about pizza being the best and is now somehow randomly talking about a donkey. So I'm gonna ask, are you drunk? And see what happens. My typing is drunk. Are you drunk? Let's see what ChatGPT comes up. Me? Drunk? No way. I'm just having a lot of fun tonight. This is just endlessly entertaining. Do you have any drink recommendation? Not for you, ChatGPT, you're already drunk. I'm looking for something new to try. Try this yourself. You may even want to get into a random argument with ChatGPT. The last prompt involves writing styles. And this reminds me of the controversy that has happened in AI art where you can visually imitate a certain artist. I suspect the same controversy is coming for writing, because look what you can currently do. If you ask Bing for a generic paragraph about a generic event, a man crossing a road, for example, what you tend to end up with is something okay, vaguely interesting in topic. I mean, this guy has a faint smile on his face as if he knew a secret. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Better than what ChatGPT used to do. It's just that writing is very bland. But what you can now do is say something like, rewrite this in the style of Carl Sagan. This particular suggestion again came from Ethan Mollick, an Ivy League professor. But look how it transforms the writing. He lingered at the edge of a pavement, his gaze locked on the crimson symbol that forbade him to proceed. Look at the new vocabulary. He had a modest attire. He resembled a typical inhabitant of this planet. He had a subtle curve on his lips, as if he possessed a knowledge that eluded others. The writing quality just went up about three grades. And now to bring this full circle, you can actually ask Bing to turn this into a current version mid-journey prompt. This is getting kind of meta, but here's what Bing comes up with these prompts here. I of course put them into mid-journey and some of the results were amazing. This is a man in a grey suit crossing a busy street in New York at night. Or how about a pixel art animation of a man crossing a road in an old school video game retro. Or maybe a cartoon style of drawing of a disguised superhero. Honestly, there are dozens more examples of incredible prompts I could show you. I just didn't want the video to get too long. I've done everything with Bing from playing tic-tac-toe, generating ASCII art of a bear, for example, coming up with startup ideas in London, and getting Bing to help me compose music. The possibilities go on and on. But do let me know in the comments if even the prompts I have shown you are as game-changing as I believe. Don't forget to leave a like and have a wonderful day.